One of Canada's most successful entrepreneurs and one of the country's biggest hearts is CEO and founder of Paramount Fine Foods, Mohamed Faki. He has made it his mission to serve the best Lebanese food and to give back to the community whenever possible. I sat down with him over breakfast at one of his restaurants to talk about the world's refugee crisis and how he's helping people here in Canada. I'm so glad that we're doing this. We're doing breakfast together because it's the most important meal of the day. Well, definitely, and especially when you try our pita bread coming out of the wood burning oven. Oh, is that coming now? Is that going to come thing. now? Yes, yes, yes. Here we go. Wow. Okay, so what what is this here? That's called fatty. Okay. It's and made out of tahini sauce, a little bit of chickpeas, and it's a breakfast. And sometimes people mix it with meat, but this one has no no meat at all in it. Can yeah, I just rip, it, just rip it apart? Don't burn your hands. It's coming out of the oven. But I love this moment. It's like oh, sharing yeah. a bread with yeah. someone and, you know, breaking bread we're, we're together. We're literally breaking bread. Ay, that's ay, what ay, we're doing. No, ay. please don't. <laughs> Your story is one of the most wonderful stories that we got to tell last year. Uh, we have to learn about your business, to learn about you, to learn about your generosity. It makes me so proud to be Canadian. How did you get in the restaurant business? By mistake. Okay, tell me what that means. So my wife called me one day and asked me to go buy kilo baklava because we had someone coming, a family coming over to visit and she wanted to treat them with something Middle Eastern. So I drive to this place called Paramount behind the police station. Nothing was paramount about the place. <laughs> it needed everything. <laughs> Doors were broken, the handles were not there. So I walked in and I ordered my kilo baklava and the owner came and said, oh, I saw your picture in an article. And he said, would you lend me $250,000? He said. And your reaction was? I said, I'm sorry, I don't know you. I just want baklava. Yeah. And he said, well, if you don't help me, me and 15 of my team, which is all of them chefs and workers, we're going to be going back home because our visa is based on this business. What got you to the point of saying, I'm going to help this man, I'm going to help this business, I'm going to help those workers? I always tell people that you need to be ready to who you want to be in life. Are you going to be that person standing beside other people, helping other people, or forgetting what people did to you and not showing up for them? And that moment I decided that, you know what, maybe I need to listen more to this. And I called the man and I asked him to come see me the second day, and he came, and I decided to actually help him. So that's less than 15 years ago? Yes. How is Paramount as successful as it is? What is the secret sauce behind this wonderful place? I think people, culture, and community. Customer is very experienced at knowing if your people are happy. And that will translate to them knowing what kind of a human being and what kind of management behind that company, behind that product that they're supporting. To be successful today, you need the support of the community. And it's two ways. You support the community and the com community will support you. When the violence erupted in Syria, you must have felt that on a level that not everyone would feel. I've cried several times yeah. looking at what's happening in Syria. Yeah. Like, that was me. That was me, that was my parents, that was my nieces and nephews when I saw those children. It's very important, Ben, that not to forget where you came from. I decided to actually go to see it firsthand yeah. at the border of Syria and Lebanon. And I went to the, those uh, camps. Then I realized that cutting a check was not good enough. I saw children, no toys, no heaters in the tents where they're living, shaking, shivering. And from there, I put a shout out to all Canadians that we can do much more. Then you find out that the government is going to be welcoming in so many, so many uh, Syrian refugees. Did you view that moment as an opportunity? I, I actually viewed that moment as one, an opportunity. And two, I think we bring people from different backgrounds that we learn from them and teach them. Yeah. From there, I launched my initiative to hire 100 Syrian refugees. These people don't need a handout. They need a hand up. Mm. They need us to just give them one opportunity, a job. And they will give above and beyond what's asked of them. You came to this country and you've had so much success. You've helped so many people. You've really uh, led with your heart. And yet, despite that, you've still been on the receiving end of some pretty dark treatment by some pretty racist people. I think Canadians thought that my money will help me 
on in those moments. Money doesn't help you in the moments where your children are involved, your family is involved. And I had to go through a litigation of two years for someone that hated me, attacked me just because of my background, just because of my name, and just because of my religion. And after a very difficult two years, long fight, and, and really yeah. a painful one, uh, we won two and a half million dollars, the biggest judgment in Canadian history against hate uh, speech. We sent a strong me message that uh, hate will never win in this country. Is that what happened when you offered to help a restaurant in trouble? I read an article in a newspaper in the United States that says, Toronto businesses shutting down due to hate. And that upset me. I actually went down the street with my car, and I was begging the man and, the, and the, his lovely wife, and they were like, really devastated, yeah. crying, upset. They feel like they're appreciative to where they got to, and they do not want to challenge. And that including sometimes being subject to discrimination, hate, uh, bigotry, and they'll say, you know what, let me stay under the radar. I said to him, look, you have no option. I'm not going to let them win. Yeah. And I'm here to support you. And he said, oh, but the staff are gone. And I said, no, 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 we want the staff back. Yeah. This is all about people not losing their job. Yeah. But to support the staff, I'll bring people from Paramount and will cost you zero. Yeah. And the sales will all go to you. The business is yours. That's your profit. I don't want anything. We just need to send a good Canadian message that this will not happen in Toronto. We're going to send a message that hate will never win in Canada. He's very appreciative, not, not only to me, to all Canadians. Because if we were to open the restaurant and no one would have showed up and didn't feel the support of the community, it would have made me look and sound wrong about Canadian. Uh, Mohammed, I got to say, man, uh, I, uh, I've been looking forward to talking to you for a while. Uh, it's been on my schedule, and I, I've been looking forward to it. I had no idea what I was walking into here. Like, you have absolutely blown me away. You are one of the most fantastic, incredible Canadians I have met in a very long time. I'm going to start crying right now. You are an incredible man. I'm going to give you a hug now, man. Thank you. <laughs> Jeez. Thanks for watching. If you like this, be sure to subscribe here. And you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.